the prophet Hosea spoke these words. My people are destroyed for the lack of the knowledge of God. And still today, these words ring true. Introducing W.C. Hunt, pastor of the world's church of the living God in Chattanooga, Tennessee. For the next half hour, we invite you to experience the words of knowledge broadcast. drew a lot of us in and by the love of God by his convicting spirit he saved us and uh, loved us enough to give his son to die for our sins mm -hmm. you know that, that's, that's, that's some great love and uh, John 3 16 to read this real quick is uh, for God so loved the world that he gave gave that's one of the main attributes of love is giving. Mm -hmm. That he gave his only begotten son mm -hmm. that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loved us so much. He loved his creation so much that even the fall of mankind, mm -hmm. God did not throw us away. He did not discard his creation. Amen. He wanted a family, and uh, every man, well, just about every man, every man wants a family. And then through, through families, you are taught how to love. Uh, you have children, and, and I, I'm a child, and my, my parents, they, they loved me. And uh, through that, through the love of Christ, through the love that we share with our families, we learn to love. And uh, saints, the one thing about it is you never want to let anything take the place of God in your life. It's true. Never want to let anything or any circumstance or anything take the place of God in your life. And again, one of the main attributes of a child of God is that he has the love of God in his heart. You don't have the love of God in your heart. You have not God. You can say all you want, talk about all you want, but the love of God is not in your heart. That's one of the first fruits of the Spirit is love. Love. Love covers a multitude of sin. And when you realize how much God loved you, how easy is, should it be for you to love others? Unless you don't really realize that you are... Uh, well, some of us might think that we, we ain't too far from the, ain't too far from the standard. 
then um, I remember the overseer always, always used to say that it's so easy for him to forgive. So easy for him to forgive. It's nothing. It's that, why did some people struggle with it? They struggle with forgiving. I mean, struggle like, man, I'm trying to forgive. It's easy for me to, saints. I'm just being honest. Because I know how much God loves me. Every man knows the bitterness of his own heart. Amen. Every man knows, every man knows to see his secret sins. Yes, sir. Every man knows, and, 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 and as, as Pastor Al taught us before, even these secret sins are sins that you don't even know about that you commit. And some of us, we know about certain sins and certain things that we're guilty of. How hypocritical is it for you to walk around and not share the same love that God has given you, the same uh, benefit of the doubt, the same grace, the same mercy that God has given you? Why did you share it with others? Why is it so hard? It shouldn't be that hard. It should not be that hard, saints. So what is love? What is love? Is it like? Since I love you, I got to like everything you do. I got I to gotta like, dang man, I got to like her. I, I got to like this brother. Man. I, no, you have the right not to like certain things, especially things that are ungodly and unrighteous. You have the right, but you don't have the right to not love one another. That's something that God has placed in your heart. If you're a child of God, that's not an option. That's not, like is an option. Love is not an option. It's supposed to come with the spirit of God in you. Amen. It's supposed to come. It's supposed to be there. And I, I did. I used to struggle with, with people who, who wouldn't forgive. And I used to always, wow, why is it so hard? Or why is it so easy for me to? It's so hard for And I was talking to somebody, and it was as simple as, I, I mean, I didn't want to come to this conclusion. But some people don't have Christ. Some people ain't saved. No matter, no matter what, no matter where they sit on Sundays, that don't mean anything. That don't mean nothing because you see the bro hey brother, sister, we, we say that a lot. We say brother and sister, we call each other brother and we should. Admonish one another, encourage one another, be glad to see one another. But some people don't have the love of God in them. They don't have the spirit of God in them. That's why they can't. No matter what you do, they can't. I can't. I just can't. I just, I'm trying. I can't. Because it ain't in them. So don't, don't try to figure it out. Don't try to go around it. Some, some people just don't have the love of God in them. Some people ain't saved. Some people never experienced Jesus Christ coming into their heart and possessing them. Some people never went through that experience. So don't try to figure it out, saints. <laughs> Sometimes it's just simple. Speaking of love. 1 John 3.10, thanks. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Hmm, in this, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Do you love your brothers and sisters? Do you? Simple as that. Do you? If you don't, uh, I don't really like being around them, though. I mean, well, I mean, you know, they got their thing. I got mine. You, well, you know, we just don't walk the same. We just don't. You can make up all kind of excuses. But if you don't love the brothers and the sisters, something is wrong with you. Something is wrong with you. Don't play it off. Don't, something is wrong with you. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning. And this is the message that we've heard from the beginning in the world's church of the living God. Amen. That ye should love one another. Amen. What type of love? Not as Cain, who was, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. You know, some, some people cannot like you because you don't go along with their foolishness. And, and, they, and they say, well, she, 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 she trusts too much. She's a super Christian. She, no, 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 no. It's just that I don't want to involve myself in 
foolish acts, the foolish stuff. You have the right to do that, saints. And, and just because we love one another, it, it does not mean that you have to validate and put up with each other's whatever. You don't have to do that. Yeah, just love, love each other. And uh, marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from life unto, from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. It means you are separated from Christ. Separated from Christ. And uh, we're going to go over here to 18, 418. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Amen. Have you ever, <laughs> have you ever wanted to do something? Have you ever wanted to go to somebody and... Uh, We'll apologize, the word of God come through, and you get convicted, you say, you know, I need to go and apologize, I need to go speak to him. And that's exactly how it's supposed to go. When the word of God comes through, you're supposed to say, now, this is what I need to work on. This is what I need to go do, not just come to church, hear it, leave, and it has no effect on you. You're supposed to, you're supposed to do some consideration. You're supposed to let the spirit of God speak to your hearts and to your minds. Because it's, it's some stuff that you may find out about yourself at church that, that you really didn't know if your ears are open. Yeah. God will cause a conviction and say, you haven't forgiven him. You haven't forgiven her. And some people have gotten, as Pastor Al said, have gotten comfortable with unforgiveness. Comfortable in their own little place. You know, not really loving, not really hating, not really caring, not really uncaring. But just existing. Find your own little niche. We're not to be like that, saints. And the love of God promotes things. Hate is a promoter of bad and evil things. Hate is a promoter. Love is also a promoter. Amen. So you can't say, I love them, and there's no action behind it. You can't say, I forgive, and there's no action behind it. Don't say, I forgive, and when that brother comes by, you Go this, go around, all the way around there, just to go over here. Just to go over here. You was right here. The brother right here, you went around the whole back of the church just to get right there. To avoid speaking to him, but I love him and I forgave him. Come on. Stop playing. Stop playing, saints. You can't trick God. You can't trick God's being either. It's just plain and simple. The love of God has to reign and rule in our hearts. But we love him because he first loved us. We didn't love God be, because of any other reason. We loved him because he first loved us. We saw his hand reach out to us. Amen. We saw his hand reach, despite us. Again, we know the bitterness of our own hearts, so we can sit up here and try to act like we don't all we want to. But we knowing God knows. And for you to know that and not extend the same thing to others, man, I, 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 I got questions about that. And the love of God, you know, the laws, the laws of God were all summed up, all summed up by one thing, that you love the brethren. Fornication, murdering, stealing from somebody, uh, hating somebody, backbiting somebody, all summed up one thing love your brother love thy neighbor as thyself all summed up on the one umbrella and that's love saints all we have is the love of God in our hearts to reign in our hearts and to rule in our hearts let it you have to let it saints and I'm going to go to uh, 1 John 4 20 stay here now, <laughs> I like this one. This is one of my favorites. If a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. You are a liar if you say that. If you got special privileges because you and God got this thing, 
that don't nobody know nothing about. It's just me and God. I got we got spe- I have special privileges. Mm-hmm. I can love to a certain extent. Once you cross me, forget four hundred and ninety. Well, I mean, for, for, please, twice it's a wrap. Once it's over. Once, and these worldly sayings fool me once. You a fool, fool me twice. I'm a fool, fool me three times. You out. Get that's <laughs> that's worldly. That's worldly. The extent that God has loved us is immeasurable. Immeasurable. You can't put a number on it. You can't say, well, he forgave me 20 times. I'm going to forgive them 20 times. He, 20 times. And even, okay. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he had seen, how? Can he love God whom he hath not seen? How is that possible? How is that possible? I see you. I see you. I see you. I love you, bro. I love you. Uh, I, don't, I don't really care for you, but you're going to love something or someone that you've never seen before. It says right here, how can he? How can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this is the commandment that we have from him. That he who loveth God love his brother also. We'll go ahead to Romans, Romans 8. Bear with me, saints. Pray with me. <laughs> Romans 8 and start with the 27th verse. Romans 8, 27. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Thank God Almighty. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Love again. So you're looking for all things to work together, right? The good, the bad, all that type of stuff, right? This is sort of conditional, saints. It's for good to them that love God. What's the condition? Loving God. Do you love God? You have to ask yourself that. So I, I hear, I see all the time people, girl, you know, all things work to the good. So don't even worry about it. Right? You, don't, look, you don't know if that person loves God or not. You don't know. And, and if they don't, this ain't, talking, this ain't talking to them. So you have to ask yourself, do you love God? Do you love God? And, and, and how do you love God? You can, just can't say that. But love is a promoter. It promotes things. It promotes action. Do you love God? And if so, you can claim this. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Amen. And over here on the 35th verse, who shall separate us from the love of Christ. Who? Who is it? Who is it? (laughs) Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword Mm -hmm. as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved Amen. us. Yes. Amen. God loves the saints. God loves the saints. And we are. And love, love, is, love is a cement, saints, that keeps us together. Yes. We're all lively yes. stones. Yes. We're lively stones. We're blessed of God. And, and, and love is a cement that holds us together. It binds us. It binds us in unity. Amen. You know, look out for one another. Pray for one another. Check on one another. Don't be so clickish. Don't be so clickish. Go outside your clique and talk to somebody you ain't ever talked to before. Because we're all brothers and sisters, saints. We are, no matter what. No matter what you may think about the person sitting next to you or somebody else. We're brothers and sisters. And we have to cooperate and let the Spirit of God rule and reign in our hearts. 
We have to. I, 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 and, um, let me go to another one. So how shall we love God? How should we love God? Deuteronomy 6, 5 tells us how we should love God. So you know now, you know, I, how do I love God? How should I love him? Deuteronomy 6, 5. And it says, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with some of good, with all thine heart. With a little of your soul, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. This right here, saints is how we should love God. With all our hearts, all our minds, with all our might. With all our might. Just think about this, saints, for a second. Where would you be if God hadn't chosen you? Where would you be if God hadn't set his love on you? It wasn't because you were good. It's because he's good. Well, because you deserved it. You were entitled to it. We were entitled to hell. We deserved hell. So why would he choose us? Because he loves us. He loved the saints. He reached down and, and saw, mm -hmm. saw that diamond in the dirt. But other people just saw the dirt. It was on the diamond. Yes. And he reached down, saints, and picked us out of the miry clay. He said, I could use this. This is beautiful to me. It's hard as right. No matter what it may look like, no matter his struggles, no matter what he go through, his, his heart is tender. Her heart is tender, though. She loves me. She'll love me. Because she will realize where she came from. I'll convict her. I'll let her see a need for me. And I'll save her. And I'll do more for them than they could ever have done for themselves. I'll clean them up in my time. Not their time. Not anybody else's time. I always said, don't let people live for you if they didn't die for you. Jesus died for you, saints. He died for us because he loved us so much. God loved us so much that he sent his son to die for our sins because he saw the value in us. Sometimes you might not see it in yourself. Others really won't see it sometimes. But God did. He did. And he chose. And you keep going, saints. Keep trusting God. Keep loving one another. Keep extending your hand of mercy and grace and and love to one another, I do. I sometimes I would get a text or a phone call from somebody who just say, who just say, "Brother, I admire you. Brother, I love you." And that means a lot to me. And I'm sure it'll mean a lot to each one of us to keep each other encouraged, yes. keep each other yes. lifted up in prayer, pray for one another. Yes. When the word of God says. If a brother be overtaken in fault, he that is spiritual help restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. When, when have some of us did that? When, when have you seen a brother kind of caught up? When have you pulled him over and been honest to him? We are our brother's keeper. Do you think that, that just means go along with them and let them be destroyed? 
Now, I've had people in this ministry that pulled me over to the side before and tell me something about myself. That was love, saints. It wasn't like. They, they, they actually had to put that on, on the shelf. They actually had to say, well, if you don't like me, I'm sorry. But I love him enough to tell him the truth. And we should love each other enough to not go along with each other. And we know we're off track. But to pull somebody to the side, call the brother and say, brother, uh, can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, uh, you know, I just, I'm just kind of concerned, you know. I haven't seen you in a while. Or, or I just kind of know a little something's going on with you. And uh, just want to encourage you, brother. Keep looking to God. Yeah. Keep trusting God no matter what. Keep saints, we are to operate like this. Yes, this, this ain't something. Don't get, don't get along with your clique and talk about them. Amen. Don't get with your people and talk about the brother. Amen. Go to him. Call him. Don't know how to have to know him. Call him. I've had people do that for me. And to me, and I'm sure some of y'all had too, saints. I had somebody come and tell you something about yourself that you probably didn't know. You probably thought you were okay. And they let you know, out of love, though. Out of love, don't go to them trying to straighten them out. Right. Brother, now, 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 now. Right. Now, you know, no better than that. You know, but no, no, no. They don't mess with people either. Don't go around meddling with people, but just if you get a chance. Speak words of encouragement to the saints. Speak words of, of, of uplifting words. Yeah. Encourage them. Love yeah. saints. And that's all saints. That's all God put on my heart. And um, love, this, love, love one another. Do you know that, 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 that God also, I thought about this. God also loved us so much that even in the midst of our over said Bishop W.C. Hunter passing that he loved us so much that he wouldn't leave us wondering. <laughs> he loved us so much that we, that we didn't have to feel, oh, what are we going to do now? <laughs> and God did. God, God set, set us up good, saints. <laughs> he set us up good and stopped thinking about the former days being better. Uh, amen. That's in the Bible. Stop thinking about, man, when I went. I, I, and, and, and I miss the bishop more than anybody. Yeah. Well, I mean, just as much as people, just as much as y'all do. I do. But for me to look back on the former days and say, those were the good old days. Well, there is something, it's something wrong with that, saints. Don't think it ain't. It's something wrong with that because the best day is today. Yeah. The best day of your life is right now. Because yeah. you're living, you're in the house of God. You're saved, you're blessed, and you have now. It's all you have, saints. Yeah. We had great days, and we're having greater days to come. Amen. Greater. He said the latter rain should be better than the before. So look for it, saints. I love you. Love me one another. Love God. Love one another.